All right, all right, all right. Welcome back to the channel. Getting some nice little sun rays in my room right now. But what I wanted to share with you guys was this, the wedding of Yeshua and Miriam. It comes to us from chapter 43. That's a seven. Um, of the Holy Megillah Nazarene Bible of the Essene Way. This is the wedding of Yahshua and Miriam at Gan Shalom in Canaan with an account of the martyrdom of Father Joseph. Okay, now, I'm not sure if you, how long you've been watching my channel and if you came across some of the videos that talked about it, but in this Holy Megillah Nazarene Bible of the Essene Way, it states that Joseph is the biological father of Yahshua. All right, so the fact that he was martyred right before this wedding has a lot to do with why Yahshua was turning water into wine. So I'm gonna just show you, if you're not familiar with the King James Version in the book of John, it talks about there was a marriage in Canaan and that the mother of Jesus was there and both Jesus and was called and his disciples was called. And you can go and read it, the whole thing about what happened, but it says down here that um, this beginning of miracles did Jesus in Canaan of Galilee, right? But I have a friend who we used to study the Bible all the time, and this was one of the chapters. We used to laugh about it a lot, but we were so confused about this situation. We wanted to know whose wedding it was, why was Jesus's mother there? And why was she telling her son to make wine for this people, right? And so we just laughed it off, but I hope you watch this video still because um, in the Holy Megillah, it says it was Yahshua's wedding. And it also says that Joseph had been killed right before the wedding. And so that was why it was a Nazarene custom it goes into. This is what Mary said. So we'll get here eventually, but I'm gonna just give you a real small snippet. So Mary, the Lord's mother on earth, told him, Yahshua, it is a Nazarene wedding custom that the groom's father provide the wine. In the absence of the father, the groom provides the wine, but you have been on the road and have no wine. So that's starting to make a little bit of sense because she asked him in the King James, she didn't ask him in the King James. She, it just says, she said unto him, they have no wine. And then it says, he said unto her, which is so confusing, woman, what have I to do with thee? My hour is not yet come. But think about what she said over here in this Holy Megillah, because it, um, she says, you've been on the road and you have no wine. So then Joseph's brother, Zabdiel, politely offered to provide the wine, saying, Gan Shalom has plenty of wine to share. But Yahshua replied, before this night is done, we will graciously receive the wonderful wine of Gan Shalom. But first, I will fulfill the Nasserian tradition where the groom provides the first wine. So that's when he tells them in this version to bring him seven jugs of water, okay? And then he chants over the jugs, but I'm gonna read that when we get there, okay? But this is this version of him turning the water into wine. And it says the reason why he was doing that was because it was his wedding. It was Yahshua's wedding and it was a Nazarene tradition it's the Nazarene custom that the groom's father provides the wine and in the absence of the father that the groom provides it. So Yahshua was supposed to provide it, but he didn't have no wine. He didn't have no vineyard. So he did a miracle. We'll get there in a little bit, but right now I'm just gonna read the first couple of parts. Like I said, I've already made a video about this first part about the um, order of the Immaculate Conception, but this explains that though Mary, since before this world began, Jade and Jana, now come as Yahshua and Miriam had long planned to wed at Canaan near Galilee. 
in the wilderness on the outskirts of Canaan was a communal farm called Gan Shalom, which means Garden of Peace. The farm was run by Nasserian relatives of Yahshua and family friends of Miriam. Okay. So our, uh, Ora, Yeshua's cousin, and she was the sixth disciple. She was born and raised at Gan Shalom. And her father, the brother of Yeshua's father, Joseph, he lived there too. Well, at Gan Shalom in Cana, not only did Yeshua have relatives, Miriam also had beloved friends at the communal farm. Yea, these were the friends that years before provided the child Miriam and her mother Zabiah with shelter while they fled to Magdala by the way of Alexandria after the martyrdom of Miriam's father, Zamira. So Miriam's father was, had also been killed when she was young. Now, wherefore both Yahshua and Miriam celebrated with dearly beloved ones upon their arrival. And by holding the wedding at Gan Shalom, Yahshua would have opportunity to comfort his mother, Mary, who had just taken refuge at Gan Shalom at the home of Joseph's brother, Zabadiel, on account of the recent martyrdom of Joseph. Now, the martyrdom of Joseph, the husband of Mary and the father of Yeshua was as follows. In Galilee, Joseph came upon Aaronites who had tied an elderly Nazarene wizardess to a tree and were about to stone her to death. Lo, the Aaronites accused the woman, Nagoa Haishakana, of being a Nazarene witch. They accused her of witchcraft because she was a devoted friend and helper of the creatures of nature, a master herbalist known to chant rhymes and known and a known believer in the Nazarene religion. She was also accused of having told children that she had danced with fairies. To the Aaronites, these were signs of witchcraft. When Joseph saw the Nazarene elders tied to the tree, then saw the men begin to throw stones at her. He called on the men to set the woman free. The mob attacked Joseph. While Joseph, using Zayin to battle the men, the woman freed herself and ran to help Joseph. But she was hit over the head with a rock and knocked unconsciously by one of the men. Joseph defeated the attackers who ran off into the darkness from whence they had come. But one of them had stabbed Joseph in the gut with a dagger before fleeing. And when Nigoa regained consciousness, she found Joseph dead from his gut wound. Nigoa had Joseph's body taken to a Nazarene safe house. And then after her wounds had been tended, she went to Mary, the wife of Joseph, with the news of Joseph's martyrdom. Right? So <clears throat> then it talks, Sarah, the authorized scribe, said she, she's got a scroll from Nigoa that she's going to include in this Holy Megillah. But then it picks up right there in verse 82 with Yeshua um, and Miriam proclaimed their wedding to be not a fast, but a feast. For the flock does not fast while the good shepherds are with them. Yeshua told the assembled Nazarene's friends and relatives at the wedding, let this wedding feast be joyful, even as we celebrate the life of Joseph. Let the joy of this assembly be expressed this day with music and much dancing. For even as a wedding is an occasion of, for great celebration, so too is a life well lived. The well lived life of Joseph is cause for the greatest of celebrations. He was the greatest fa father that I can imagine. We will mourn Joseph by celebrating Joseph, for that is the tradition of our Nazarene forefathers and foremothers. And we will uphold that holy tradition. We will take turns sharing our memories of the life of Joseph, and then Miriam and I will be married. Let us share food and wine while we share our stories about Joseph. Mary, the Lord's mother on earth, told him, Yahshua, it is a Nazarene wedding custom that the groom's father provide the wine. In the absence of the father, the groom provides the wine. But you have been on the road and have no wine. Zabadiel, Joseph's brother, politely offered to provide the wine, saying, Gan Shalom has plenty of wine to share. Yahshua replied, Before this night is done, we will graciously receive the wonderful wine of Gan Shalom. But first, I will fulfill the Nazarene tradition wherein the groom provides the first wine. Wherefore, I say, bring me seven jugs of water from a spring. Johann said, I will go and do the carrying. Levi, 
Tyone, Ra'am, and Nathaniel accompanied Johan to help carry the jugs of water. When they brought the seven jugs to the Lord, Yash uh, to the Lord, Yahshua chanted over the jugs, Lo, the water became wine. Yahshua said, As this water has been transformed into wine, as the caterpillar is transformed into a butterfly, so Joseph is now transformed into a cherub. The Magdalene said, Let us celebrate the life of Joseph. The transition of Joseph to El Cush as a hero in the cause of goodness is a cause for joyous celebration. Just imagine the reception that the human father of the Lord Christ will receive in El Kush. He will be received happily by the cherubim of El Kush and of the higher heavens. Lo, Sa'ara and Abraham will receive Joseph in the seventh heaven and with the holy entourage of beings of great light and he will be given his next mission. We give thanks for the life of Joseph. We celebrate his life today along with my wedding to Yahshua. Yea, the marriage of Yahshua and Miriam is also worthy of joy and celebration. So I'm going to stop here because it's already probably over 10 minutes. And I wanted to say a few things about this water into wine. So it was a miracle in this version as well. But it was also symbolic of Joseph's transition and uh, his transformation into a cherub because he died trying to save this lady, Nigoa. And so he died as a hero because he did save her. And so they're making some mention about these levels you get. He went straight to the seventh heaven. All right. And then it says he will be given his next mission because that's what the whole, if you watch the seven heavens, you'll know what the different levels are, what happens when you get there. But, um, so that was beautiful. The transformation of the water to the wine was symbolic of what had just happened with his father. And it was all about spiritual, makes a lot of sense. Um, there's a few different things between this story and the King James. It wasn't seven jugs, it was six. And they say that was after the manner of the purifying of the Jews. What we have over here in the Holy Megillah saying that he got seven jugs and he was performing a Nazarene custom that the groom provides the wine. So he said, bring me seven jugs. I bet you that has to do with the seventh heaven and, and Joseph being transformed into a cherub. So pay attention to all of this stuff because it's so juicy and it's got so much information. But um, I'm going to be back with uh, the rest of this. Because um, like I said, the wedding itself is all the way down here in verse 382. So we got like a whole video or maybe two, depending on how fast I can get through it, of these stories of Joseph. And they are important because he was the father of Yahshua. And he was, uh, he wrote a couple of scrolls and um, you'll hear from these stories. He was a great man. All right, guys, stay tuned. I'll be back.